Hello, you are watching New Vision TV News. I am Raithi Nasaje. Now, new details have emerged indicating that two senior police detectives were recently asked to steer clear of investigations into the murder of Assistant Inspector General of Police Andrew Felix Kawesi. The development has, however, caused concerns over the way the investigations are being carried out. The detectives, John O'Dell Olara, the commandant of the Kampala Metropolitan Police Investigators, and the Kira Road Police Station Criminal Investigations Boss, Sophie Naboshe, were asked to steer clear of the, of the case last month, reportedly on orders of the police chief Martin Okoth Ochola. However, security sources say Olal and Naboshe were faulted following their disagreement with the internal security organization ISO. Operatives over the way fresh investigations into the matter were being carried out. The fresh investigations are being carried out by the by ESO, supported by the Chieftains of Military Intelligence, CMI, and the police. According to sources, Abich Tagenda, a flying squad operative who was the first police officer to be arrested in connection with the murder, has to date refused to record a statement. Another police officer allegedly on the wanted list is SCP Jonathan Barroza. He is believed to be in hiding in the neighboring country. Kawesi was shot dead on March 17th last year as he left his home in Kulambiro. Kawesi was murdered together with his bodyguard, Kenneth Rauru, and driver, Geoffrey Wambeo, by assailants traveling on motorcycles. Moving on, the new taxes that have been imposed in the new financial year will roll back most of the gains Uganda has made in the financial sector, experts have warned. The experts observe that the new taxes on banking and mobile money will make Ugandans resort to backward methods of making financial transactions. Yesterday, Patrick Muhere, the chairperson of the Uganda Bankers Association, told the media that much as the government needs tax revenues, the methods being used to impose tax collection could negatively impact commercial banks and mobile money business. Under this year's financial budget, the excise duty on bank transactions was increased from 10% to 15%. A tax of 15% was imposed on money transfer or withdrawal withdrawal services, including transfers and withdrawals by operators licensed or permitted to provide communications or money transfers. In other news, the Electoral Commission has postponed campaigns and polling for parliamentary and local government councils in the new municipalities, town councils and sub-counties. The affected new municipalities are Kotido, Apak, Nebi, Shema, Ibanda, Wujiri and Injero. In its earlier program for the new electoral areas, the Commission had scheduled July 17th as the date for elections to fill positions in municipal divisions, town councils and sub-counties. However, according to the new electoral program released yesterday, the Commission has selected July 24th as the new date for the elections. The latest program, signed by the ECH person Justice Simon Biabakama, indicated that the elections for MPs and municipal chairpersons in the new municipalities previously scheduled for July 19th will now take place take place on July 27th. According to Biawakama, this is intended to provide enough time between the various levels of elections. And in our sports news, Commonwealth champion Stella Chesang is one of the big names named on Uganda's Africa Senior Championship team. The competition that attracts the continent's elite athletes will this time run from August 1st to 15th in the Nigerian city of Ashaba. Chesang, who won 10,000 meters gold in Gold Coast in April, has been entered in the same race. This will be Chesang's first track race since her gold run in April. 
In May, she competed at the TC's World 10 km race in Bangalore, finishing 10th. A week later, she was in South Africa for a 12 km race in Cape Town, where she was a second. She will, in the 10,000 meters, in Asheva, be joined by Marceline Chilangat, who took bronze in the same event in Austria. The team of trained athletes was released by Uganda Athletics Federation's Tekken Committee on Tuesday night. You're still watching New Vision TV and in our Daily Pal of Africa series, we look at the ego eye of Rakai Town. Now, Rakai Town is located in Rakai District in the southern part of Uganda. Rakai Town is about 65 kilometers southwest of Masaka, the largest town in the sub-region. Rakai borders Nyantonde to the northwest, Rengo in the north, Kalangala in the east, and Insinjiro to the west. Let us take a look. This is an area view of Rakai Town. This town is one of the symbols that truly represent a country that has agriculture as its backbone. And yes, the backbone of Uganda is agriculture. Some of the residents of Rakai are known to be farmers, as you can barely miss a garden at every homestead you come across. The infrastructure that enables transportation of their goods is also under construction, though most of it is helping them gain profits from their hard work. Rakai people commonly speak Luganda because they are from the Bantu ethnic group. For more Pile of Africa stories, visit our website www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sunday Vision, is also in the home of adventures, so grab your copy every Sunday for Pile of Africa stories. And that's all they had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more news updates and more programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video. I am Rathit Naseje.